what is marriage? Is there a reason why marriage is defined as, understood as, rooted in the phenomenon of male-female sexual, romantic, and social attraction? Does it, what purpose does thinking about marriage in this way serve? More specifically, I think you should be addressing what purpose is served by thinking of marriage exclusively this way. If there is a purpose to thinking of marriage in terms of heterosexual attraction, why is that purpose undermined by thinking of it also in terms of homosexual attraction? And uh, so it's not a circular argument. It is not simply marriage is defined this way, therefore we can't think about it. What I believe is that marriage is the union of husband, the short version, marriage is the union of husband and wife for a reason. And yes, it's because these are the unions that we all count on to make new life. The only unions that can, can connect a child in love to their mother and father. And how is that in any way undermined by recognizing same-sex marriage? How does recognizing same-sex marriages disconnect children from their mother and father? And if it does, and we must forbid same-sex marriages because they don't produce children, why does nobody argue against granting a marriage license to a postmenopausal woman? I got into this gay marriage debate in a bit unusual way. Um, back in 1982, when I was a senior at Yale and a pro-life atheist, I got pregnant. Um, and so I had my uh, first son, uh, his father was a Yale student, a year younger than me, and I was very concerned that I'd not interfere with his education. Um, so we kind of kind of scuttled along and I, uh, my parents supported me and I tried to figure out how to uh, work and take care of my son. Um, and then in three years later, four years later, he was about, he was about three years old, in 1986, um, my son's father called me up and said uh, that it was just too much for him, he couldn't take it anymore, which was kind of puzzling to me because frankly he wasn't really doing very much. Um, <laughs> but anyway, as I said, that was 86 and neither my son nor I have seen or heard from him since. I can see why that would make you want people to take marriage very seriously, but I don't see why this would make you oppose gay marriage. Imagine if what happened to you happened to a bisexual woman who, after being divorced by the father of her child, settled in with a woman who initially committed to help raising that child, but then decided to abandon her as well, and who never even had to bother with a divorce because they were never permitted to get married in the first place. Can you not see how someone with this experience would want both opposite sex marriages and same sex marriages to be taken seriously? How how does granting recognition to one reduce the gravity with which people regard the other? And um, I kind of started thinking about it because of my own experience and because of my experience with the sun, and two things became clear to me very fast. The first is that it's really hard to raise children on your own. So why would you want to keep gay folks with kids from marrying their partners? And, um, uh, t you know, I, I, could, I believe that every child who's raised without his mother and father has two big questions, even those that do fine and do well, that they have to wrestle with. Um, the first is, uh, since most of these children are raised by their mothers, and like my son, lose their fathers, um, what does male love feel like? What is its relationship to me? Why the fuck would they assume that male parental love would feel different from female parental love? And why, even if there were some difference, would this question produce some disturbing existential angst? Is love a feminine characteristic? And what does that mean for me as a, as a girl or for me as a boy? They process it differently. And the second question that's not hard to get theological fast is that children ask themselves is why is it that one half of the people who made me doesn't seem to love me. What does that say about me? What does that say about love and its relationship to creation and the universe? Gallagher talks about being raised by someone other than one's biological parents as though it produces some horrible, disturbing, Kafka-esque identity crisis. One that is apparently so severe that it somehow justifies denying marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Not everyone who is raised without their biological father or without their biological mother feels unloved as a result. If your biological father was a sperm donor, why would you expect him to love you? Why would you ask, what does that say about me? This would only be asked by someone who inferred that 
that the absence of their biological father implies that there is something wrong with them. If the reason your biological father doesn't love you is because he never met you, or perhaps never even met your mother, why would you infer that this lack of love has anything to do with you? Are there really a lot of kids conceived by sperm donation asking, why doesn't the guy who jerked it into a cup for money love me? And more importantly, what the fuck does this have to do with gay marriage? Even if it is the case that children who grow up with absent biological parents are somehow injured by this, same-sex marriage would not be the cause of this injury. It would be the result of biological parents giving their children up for adoption, donating sperm, or serving as a surrogate mother. Banning gay marriage is not going to stop these things. These things would still exist even if there were not one single homosexual on the planet. If Maggie Gallagher is really worried about children growing up without their biological parents, why do I not see her or her like-minded conservatives calling for the restriction of adoption? I know many religious folks are against surrogacy and sperm donation, but I don't see them clamoring for laws against them as zealously as they fight gay marriage. Why is this? If the absence of biological parents is what concerns them the most, then this should be their first priority. The fact that I don't see them campaigning against these things as vocally as they campaign against same-sex marriage makes this argument look disingenuous to me. If you'd like to help support my work, I do have a Patreon.